And you were once alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds. He is now reconciled in us and in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. If indeed you continue in the faith, steadfast or stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. Colossians 1, 21-23. Well, hello folks. Welcome back to another episode of Two Guys and the Bible. I'm C.A. Middleton. Y'all know us by now. Yeah. Uh, youth pastor at Lake Athens Baptist Church. Cody Coleman, pastor of Parkview Reformed Baptist Church. So you you look very festive this morning. I have my Christmas cup. Yeah. My number three Christmas sweater. Got one left. He has a lot of Christmas sweaters, folks. <laughs> my goal is to have one for every day of December. That's a lot of sweaters. <laughs> You're gonna have to like keep them in a storage building. Right, just take them out for Christmas. Yeah. 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 Uh, <clears throat> so. I don't have any sweaters, but I do have a adult size onesie. Now that's with lights on it, and I haven't. Worn that it. might take the cake. I might have to wear it Christmas Eve. That's Christmas pretty morning. sweet. Uh, I like. I saw uh, someone with a really serious old school like wool vest that had the big black square and red checker. Like, I mean, it was it was legit. I was like, that's so festive. I should add that to my arsenal. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I hope you guys are all doing well. I hope you are ready for uh, Christmas and been praying and really celebrating what this season means. And uh, I hope our last video encouraged you uh, to do that. Um, so, yeah, we're running a day late this week. Yeah. All right, though. Life happens. There's no law. No. We're under grace. <laughs> That's true. <clears throat> so what are we talking about this week, Cody? Well, I just, uh, I think if you're going to talk about making Christ the center of this season and, and the focus and him coming as a baby putting on flesh, I think it's important that we talk about who he is. Who is Jesus? What does the Bible say about him specifically? Um, and, and one of the places that is probably the, the most clear and evident um, and detailed, I would probably say, in the short areas in Colossians 1. Right. Um, it right. talks about who he is. Um, yeah, there's a few places, you know, you want to run to immediately. Uh, in the New Testament, John 1 would be right. a good one to go. Uh, Philippians 2. Philippians 2. Colossians, Colossians 1. 1 here. Yeah. Hebrews 1. Yeah. Um, we chose this one because of the, the the section you read a while ago. Yeah. Right? Um, but before you get to that, you know, you have this this section here where it says in verse 15, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. So that's the foundation mm -hmm. to the passage that we're talking about. Yeah, and <clears throat> having an understanding of these things, and that they're they are part of who they're who he is helps us understand him 
or helps us have more confidence, if you will, in that he is, is mighty to save sinners. Like he's able, he is competent, he is powerful, he, he's able to save sinners. Because I think there's sometimes in our sinful nature, the enemy can use it. We, we begin to like, how did he save me? How is he able to do this? Like, what is it about this one person that can die one time, deal with sin once for all, once for, all for all of his people, the millions of that might be, and all the millions of sins, how does he, how does that happen? So, yeah, it's a good, it's a good thing to talk about because um, we can get caught up in this we know we're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. It's not of our own doing. It's a gift from God. No works whatsoever. It's all grace. Mm. Um, and then in our sanctification, as our, our lives as a Christian, we have sometimes those sins we can't shake loose. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And our, it, these just happen, right? You seem like you're getting victory over it, and then it, it comes in again and just knocks you down right. and you're like, you think, I can't go to God again with this. Mm -hmm. I can't. I can mm -hmm. spend what? A thousand times? I've yeah. asked forgiveness for the yeah. same thing. And so at that moment you don't believe him to have mercy, sufficient grace. Sufficiency is where. Yeah. He, you've, you're believing that he's inadequate in some way. Whether he's inadequate to have an enough mercy and grace where your sin abounds, grace abounds more. Either you don't believe that, you believe he's inadequate in that, or you you, you don't believe that he's adequate to save you, like to, to, to actually give you strength. And so there's this there's this new song that I told my wife last night that I think I'm obsessed with. Um, because I think I've listened to it sixty seven times in like three days. But the words are power. And the very last line of each little chorus is, we can always run to Jesus, Jesus strong and kind. And those two things, we think he's inadequate in often when we continue to, to sin. We, don't, we wouldn't say that out or, loud. Or, if someone asked a question, we would. Or, or maybe it's the same thing in a different way. Or it's like, Okay, it's like he has this jar of grace for each individual person, mm -hmm. and he keeps giving it to us, but when that jar is going to be empty someday, right. that's not how it works. Right. Uh, there's, it's and unending. That's why it's important to know, like, and it's important to know that God's attributes are not individual things out there. Right. He's eternal, but that eternity and that infinite about God is separate from his mercy and his grace right. when they're to, so there's this infinite eternal all powerful grace yes because they're 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 all connected in one person yeah he and when, when he says he's the fullness of God that's what we're talking about yeah there's he doesn't set aside the one attribute God doesn't set aside his you know his his justice mm -hmm. Uh, and replace it with mercy. Right. It's both at the same time, right. right? And then we see that on the cross. Right. I just that's an example. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's let's uh, see. You only have fourteen points there. Very pure. pure <laughs> He's got a fourteen point message coming to you guys. So. <laughs> There's no sub points <laughs> oh. under each fourteen. <laughs> In what four verses? <laughs> Yeah. No, these are just as I as I read through it. I said I want to just see what this says about Jesus. Yeah. And um, so I just quickly, as you're reading through it, you, you jot it down and, and yeah. And again, I think what we're doing here, like obviously, we can't ignore the fact, and we're not trying to, that it's Christmas season and we're celebrating the coming of Christ. We're mm -hmm. talking about that um, and the sufficiency of Christ wrapped up in the ongoing of a Christian life, mm -hmm. right? We all struggle sometimes, and we, like you said, we, we, we have an understanding of grace and mercy, but sometimes we question: Can we still receive grace mm -hmm. and mercy for mm -hmm. this? Mm -hmm. Or 
and I, and I think it comes down to the practical unbelief. Because I don't think we're consciously just saying to ourselves, I don't believe that. Right. Because if I asked you, you'd say, yes, I believe that. But it's that practical working out that faith where we act as though we don't believe that that person who, who came in flesh, that the deity who came in flesh, God himself who came, somehow is inadequate to continue to help us. And I think that last part um, in verse 22 deals with that, but it's in the context of him. I mean, you see, that it's like Paul says, here's who he is, and then he's the one that's reconciled you and says, in order to present you holy and blameless. Like, so he's able to present you holy and blameless. Right. Did you not just see what I said in verses 15 through 20? Right? Yeah. And that's what we want to do. Uh, that's it's Chris. You look at Jesus and go, okay, well, how does this baby in a manger, who, yes, we all know grew up, how does he, how does he save us? How is he able to do that? And so I think that um, if you took the last part, the part that I read, 21 and 22 and 23, and you see that he's saying, you were alienated, you were hostile, you're doing evil. He has now reconciled in his body of flesh. So that's, that's what we're talking about at Christmas, the incarnation. God robed himself in flesh. The word became flesh, dwelt among us. Emmanuel, God with us. By his death. So without a body of flesh, we can't be reconciled. Right. But it can't just be a body of flesh. This can't be just a man. Right. And so that's why we have the verses leading up to this. And, and that, so that's important to what we're talking about, about his, his mercy, his grace to continue to forgive us, um, to justify us, but then to continue to forgive us in our sanctification and to help us overcome. As Hebrews says, he will save us to the uttermost. Yes. So, um, so um, at the beginning, you have the claim that he and the truth that he is the image of the invisible God. He is God. He came to manifest to us who God is, what he's like. Yeah. If you want a picture of God, read the Bible, right. especially the Gospels. Right. And the fullness of God dwelt in the person mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ. Right. Um, that's why he is the only sufficient propitiation mm -hmm. um, for our sins. Right. Um, maybe we should explain propitiation for yeah. a second. Can you um, spell it? Yeah, I can. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> because I use it so much. Yeah, right. Uh, <clears throat> Propitiation is, um, it's two parts, basically. It both satisfies the demands of God's justice. So God just does, he doesn't just forgive us and sweep our sins under the rug. He is a just God, so he must pour out justice on sin. So Jesus satisfied that justice, right? Mm -hmm. And it appeases his wrath. Mm -hmm. Like God is angry with the wicked every day. Mm -hmm. um, he is wrathful because he is holy and good and we're not. So Christ, not only did he satisfy the demands of justice and God forgiving sinners and remaining just, he also appeased the wrath that we deserve mm -hmm. uh, because he's totally God and he is totally man. So people say fully God, fully man. Mm -hmm. um, both one person, two natures. Mm -hmm. um, he is the only person, he is the only way mm -hmm. that we can be saved for our sins, mm -hmm. from our sins. And that's why he chose to dwell among us mm -hmm. as a man, like you right, said. Right. That's why we celebrate um, mm -hmm. his birth. So to bring it home to them, in this one particular instance, the baby in a manger, which is what is the main thing that people 
right? That there's a baby in a manger. Jesus is here. And they have plays where wise men and shepherds come and see whatever. That baby is God. Yeah. At the he, same time that he's in the manger, he's upholding the universe. By the word of his power. Right. Yeah. There's a song, again, on that children's city we talk about. Uh, every now oh, yeah. Man. Totally God, totally man. Mm. Um, like he can walk on water, yeah. but his feet get filthy. Mm. Right? Yeah. He... <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he... He, um, he spoke this world into existence. Yeah. And then he had to learn how to write his name. Yeah. So both of Yeah. So it's you start. Yeah. We can't fully explain yes. that. Yes. We just believe it. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We believe it though. And then he says in 16, for by him all things were created in heaven and earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. I see that as a declaration. There's obviously a lot there, but if I could sum it up, of his power. Yeah. Because where do we see God's power? The effortlessness of just speaking a word and things existing that didn't exist. That's power. Yeah. That's. And so the baby in the manger is all powerful. Therefore, he's able to reconcile you to him by his death. So that's what I'm just trying to link each one of these right. right back to why we can look why Jesus is sufficient for our salvation in all aspects, justification, sanctification, glorification. Yeah. So when we believe God, right? we place our faith in Christ. We are declared right with Him. Mm -hmm. Does it mean we are turned or made righteous? Right, right then and there. We are declared righteous. Mm -hmm. It is a legal transaction. Right. Because Jesus has exchanged his righteousness for our unrighteousness. And therefore, at that moment, when we have true saving faith, that's a gift from God in Jesus Christ and what he did, we are declared right with God. Mm -hmm. And, as our friend Paul Washer points out, we are treated that way. Mm -hmm. All of every sin we've ever committed Every sin we've thought about committing, every sin we will commit is nailed to the tree mm -hmm. and we bear it no more. Mm -hmm. It's gone. It's, it's been punished if you are a follower of Christ. Mm -hmm. So when we are wrestling with, I can't go to the Lord again with this, it's, we're going to have to qualify <laughs> Yes, mm -hmm. but when we have that in our mind, well, I just asked forgiveness for this yesterday, and here I am doing it again. There's no way I can go to the Lord. First of all, that is a wrong way of thinking mm -hmm. about Christ, his sufficiency, mm -hmm. grace, and all this. But the Bible tells us it was nailed to the tree. The moment we place our faith in Jesus, we bear it no more. Now, where we need to qualify this is that doesn't mean you have a ticket to sin. It's not a license. You you don't you pervert grace and don't understand grace if you don't have a grace that is powerful enough to forgive you and powerful enough to give you victory and overcome and have you overcome from <clears throat> sin. Right. Now, so that's not what I'm. I'm not saying. Yeah, yeah. We can continue to do these same sins because they've been nailed to the tree. I'm saying. Even when we do fail and we we're wrestling with a particular sin or something like that that we can't seem to shake, we do need to understand that if we have true saving faith in Christ, it's already like it was nailed to the tree. Um, As my friend Michael Durham says, it is dishonoring to God. It's dishonoring to Christ to not go to Him. Yeah. When you're when you've sinned, 
it is honoring to Christ to go to him. When he, it's not more spiritual for you to go to the penalty box. You know? And of course, we're not talking about don't be ashamed either. Right. You need to be. Be ashamed. Yeah. Have, <laughs> but don't be ashamed to not to go to Jesus. Right. He's the one place you can go. Yeah, he's the only, yeah. Not only, yeah, not only he's the, the one place you can, he's the only place you can. Yeah. But in, re in referring to that grace, the great qualifier for that, I find it in Titus 2, 11. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people. That's Jesus. Jesus is the grace of God in, incarnate. Yeah. The fullness of God's grace dwells in Jesus Christ. Now look at verse 12. Training us. What? What's training us? The grace of God that's appeared bringing salvation to all. Training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live a self to live self-controlled, upright, godly lives in this present age. So you cannot tell me that you've experienced the grace of God for your justification, and there's no there's no grace of God for your sanctification. Right. It's it doesn't yeah, it all flows perfectly with mm -hmm. one another, and uh, and everybody. So, and uh, here's another thing I would point out: don't judge your uh, the don't judge your salvation based on the sanctification of those around you. Either way, so. Cody is proud of his depravity, right? And over here I am, I'm trying to get rid of mine. So I can't judge my salvation based on Cody's being proud of his, in his on his sanctification, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Because I'm going to get puffed up and see, look, I'm holier than you. By the way, he's not proud of that. I'm just <laughs> Yeah, right. It. Or vice versa. Let's yeah. say I am like running headlong into sin and I see Cody over here. His sanctification is way up here. Mm. I can't judge my salvation based on his sanctification either mm. because we are all sanctified at different places. We need to examine according to Scripture if we believe what we are to believe. Right? Have, mm. Has God changed our hearts? The question, cannot, we, the question can't always be how much are you sanctified? Are you being sanctified? Right. Um, Here's... Here's the way I like to put it. We need to be 100% reliant on the grace of God without taking it for granted. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the mark of a Christian. Yeah, and I think having a full-orbed theology and understanding of the grace of God, that yes, see a lot of people will say, the grace of God is that unmerited kindness, right, of God. And then they'll run to Romans 6, the grace of God is abounds where my sin abounds. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes and amen. I'm, I'm all for that. But I also have a grace that saves me. Because right after that, right, right, what does he say? Paul says, they got some goofball that's going to argue, oh, Paul, that means I can just do whatever I want. And he's like, no, no, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. No. Isn't it amazing not. how all throughout Romans, Paul anticipates these questions being asked? Yeah. It's that just it's almost as if it's inspired by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, it's almost as if it's not Paul, right? Really <laughs> behind the whole thing, right? Yeah. It's God who knows the who knows the hearts of men. Man, yeah, yeah. It, that's that's right. Though he goes on his, all, explaining all this, they're like, if sin abounds, if, if grace abounds, mm. where sin abounds, why don't we go on yeah, we're, sinning? We're glorifying God by our sinning, yeah, because we can then glorify His grace, and it's like, no, no. It is true, but that's not how we, like, Yeah. when you are new in Christ, you are a new creation, yeah. right? Paul also says that. Right. You know, right. if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has mm. passed away, the new has come. Right. That's a symbol. That's what we, Baptists, mm -hmm. we believe happens in, in baptism. It's a, it's a symbol of dead, you know, mm. to our old self, alive, new in Christ. Right. Um. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so then the so you have you have him. The fullness of God dwells in him. That makes him sufficient to save us. His power 
that we see here is sufficient and makes him sufficient to save us. He has authority. Verse 18. He is the head of the body, the church. He's king. He's Lord. We need a king to come take dominion over us and rule over us. And he's able to, he's sufficient yeah. in doing that. He has sufficient authority. And he, and he does do that. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. Okay. Let's so, go. Go ahead. No. Uh, let's just keep walking through this. So. And then you see that he's the firstborn from the dead. Right. He has power over death. A couple things. We're dead in our sin. He has power over that death, that spiritual death. Right. And ultimately, we will die physically or this physical body, but he has power over that yeah. so that the Christian continues to go on. Right. It's just a, it's a going to bed at one night, waking up. It's a walking through the door. Uh, death is a threshold into eternity. Now it's a painful threshold, an agonizing threshold, but it's a threshold nonetheless. R.C. Sproul, I think, put it this way, for the Christian Death is just going faster from this world on to the next. Mm -hmm. Something like mm -hmm. that. And what's wrong with you people? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and we have to understand, like, we will be reunited again with our resurrected bodies right. one day. One day. You know, like the final consummation yeah. of all things. And how do we have hope of that? Because so Jesus... Firstborn from, first the born from the dead. Well, you said, well, what about Lazarus? Well, Lazarus died again. Yeah, right. He didn't stay yeah. alive. He died again. Jesus didn't die again. He, right. You know, he, that's what this means. Right. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, and, you know, look, in chapter two, I don't want to skip ahead too far if you got more there. But in, in chapter two, so that, well, that's what we're talking about. Therefore, as you have received Christ, <coughs> if you, as you have received Christ Jesus as Lord, so walk in Him. Mm. What does that practically look like? Do, do we always walk in? What about if we just sin? Mm. Right? Like you said, we tend to think we need to sit in the penalty box mm -hmm. for a little while. Right? We, we, like, well, I can't go to Jesus now because it's still fresh. We don't think that confessing our sins is walking with Jesus. We think that the only way we're actually walking with Jesus is if we're not sinning. Well, then you're never going to walk with Jesus. Yeah. Because we have so much sin. Now, Here's the thing. I think we also, this is a side note, I think we also need to understand, get a full picture of sin. Because I run into a lot of people, Christians, who they're categorizing a temptation as sin. Well, we know that's not true because Jesus never sinned and he was tempted. Yeah. But you know what I mean? They confuse the, the flesh tempting and the corruption still remaining and, and tempting us and wooing us as us not be, we're not sanctified enough if I'm still tempted and woo. Right. Well, no, that's not. the you're, Do you overcome the temptation? You give in to the temptation, you know, so. Well, that on one side and on the other side, there's some that say they're, what they're doing is not sinning when it clearly is. Right. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, one. I would argue that over the last ten years, more than that, probably, uh, politics have some people have gone so headstrong into politics, right? I'm just using this as an example um, that they they truly have their hope 
placed mm -hmm. in who does or does not get elected, like mm -hmm. the future of the world and all this. I'm like, I think you could be sitting there because mm -hmm. uh, God is still in control. Mm -hmm. He's still sovereign. Um, you know, anyway. But yeah, and, and it's we have to see the grace of God in exposing those things is what you're trying to like. To walk in Christ is to have your sin exposed. You're walking in the light as he is in the light. That means you're going to be exposed. So sin will be exposed. And we have to get to the point as, Christ, as Christians that find God showing our sin is a good thing. Yeah. And it should cause us to run to him, not to run away from him to the penalty box and um, sit for... A little while till we do enough things to um, make us a little bit better in order to go to him. Right. You dishonor him when you do that. So. Yep. Uh, but. And it finishes off in verse 7. So it says, Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> we have a sufficient Savior. He doesn't just partially save, he fully saves. He doesn't just partially forgive, he fully forgives. Um, and verses 15 through 20 are the foundation for our reconciliation, our sanctification, our steadfastness, our walking in him, our being rooted and built up in him. I mean, think about this. You're being built up by the one who built the world. You're being built up in the one who holds everything together. This is a strong Savior. Yeah. And so we can't let the perceived, right, we get caught up in Christ came as a baby, and we always look at a baby and say that's, they're, they're weak and they're needy, and that's, that's part of the humility, right? He, he humbled himself to this. But yet at the same time, he is God in the flesh, powerful, mighty, sufficient, holy, supreme, all of that. Yeah. So. And one more. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above. Mm -hmm. Seek him. Seek the things that are about where Christ is, seated at the right hand of the Father. Mm -hmm. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. Mm -hmm. That passage destroys the silly statement of that person is, is so heavenly minded, he's no earthly good. Uh, yeah. That, <laughs> the only way that you can be any earthly good is to be heavenly minded. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, where do we come up with this stuff? <laughs> yeah. Because here's the thing, honestly, when, when we're, again, we're going back to this point, when we're wrestling with the idea that, oh man, can I go to Jesus now with this again? Yeah. Right? We're focusing not on things that are above. Mm. We're focusing on, on things that are below. Right. We're focusing on our own Fallen reasoning, right, and our finite understanding, right, of the grace and mercy and sufficiency mm -hmm. of Christ, mm -hmm. the one who created all things, who humbled himself and came, was born as a baby, mm -hmm. even though he spoke this universe into existence and went and hung on a mm -hmm. tree for our sins. Um, yeah, that's he is sufficient, that's what we're talking about here. Um, in all things, mm -hmm. and you're 
salvation, your regeneration, mm -hmm. sanctification, salvation, consummation. Mm -hmm. He is the one who is, uh, he's the only one that's sufficient for all things. And so he gives us who he is and then tells us to set our minds on him. So that's the application of, we, it's a great mercy and grace of God that we, we live in a place and a time where they even every, like, even in some aspect, the secular world, but an entire nation takes a, almost an entire month to make a big deal about the birth of Christ. So it's a great opportunity to set your mind on things above. I told the kids on Sunday, I want them to think every time they get a good gift. Yeah, enjoy the gift. I'm going to break it. Jesus isn't broken. It's going to get old and I'm going to throw it away. Jesus never gets old. Yeah. Right? You see what I'm saying? It's just Jesus is always better than whatever good thing we have here. And we have to think that way. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's what that's talking about. Yeah. Put your mind on things above, not on things on the earth below. Anyway. So. Yeah. Uh, you got anything else for the, for the good folks? No, I just. Uh, you can. Um, you can go to him. He's sufficient, and uh, we ought to run to him often and all the time. So, right on. So use this. I hope this is an encouragement to you as well. Um, again, if you're in one of those seasons where you're like, "Oh man, I just don't know if I can go to God again with this," run to him. Mm -hmm. He's the only one that can give you victory over that. He's the only one that can forgive you for it. Um, yes, be ashamed. It, don't let that being ashamed prevent you from going to the only one that can, keep, can forgive you for it. Yeah. And I think finally think of this. He came to us. So why would he cast us out if we come? Yeah, he knows. I mean, yeah. He's, yeah. Yeah, he, he, he knew who we were when he hung on that tree and died for us. He knew every sin we'd commit, every right. sin we would think about committing. He, he knew all this stuff, and right. he still voluntarily went and exchanged his righteousness for our own righteousness. So remember that. Thanks again for watching. Two guys in the Bible, please share it with your friends and your family. And um, if you ever have any questions, just drop them down there in the comments section, and uh, we'll, we'll answer them. Uh, maybe they're on the comment section or on the video. Right. Yeah. Well, hit them with the tagline, Cody. The one-liner. Yeah. Well, our prayer always is that this has uh, been sanctifying for the saints. Um, has, has brought salvation to sinners and glorifies God. God bless. Merry Christmas. We'll see you next time.